y 2 CAD. We'll wait for everyone to join and get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to give everybody just a couple of minutes and we'll get started. Wonderful. Hello. As people are beginning to join us, it would be wonderful if you guys can put in the chat maybe where you're joining us from. Uh, I know we have people coming from all over, so we'd love to hear where you're joining us from. Um, and of course, just to remind you that we are going to have a Q&A session at the end of this live demo of CORE. So of course, we'll be anxiously awaiting any questions that you guys might have as we go through. So again, we're just going to give everybody a couple of minutes to join us and we will get started. So hello. And again, for those just joining us, please feel free to share where you guys are joining us from. We would love to hear it see all of those lovely cities around the U.S. I have everybody, Florida, New York, Chicago, Miami, California. We are coast to coast today, everybody. This is great. Very excited to have you guys joining us for this live demo of four. So again, just giving everybody a couple of minutes I love in the remote world, jumping from meeting to meeting. Give everybody a few minutes to get some water uh, before we dive in. So welcome, everybody. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Just a few more minutes and we'll get started. I'll give about a minute and a half, two more minutes, and we'll get started. Welcome, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us for our live demo of CORE. Very excited to be taking you all through the platform today. So again, just another minute or two and we'll get started. So as the rest of the group is trickling in, again, I just want to remind everybody that as we are going through this session, we will have our chat and Q&A sections open for any questions that you guys might have regarding the platform, our services, anything that we can do for you. So please feel free to write those in the chat. We will have a dedicated time at the end of the presentation to go through any of those questions. So we look forward to reading those, please. Put them in the chat, put them in the Q&A session, and uh, we'll be able to get to those at the end. One more minute and we'll get started. <clears throat> Fantastic turnout today. This is great. <clears throat> All right, everyone, let's get started. So first off, I would just like to say welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. 
My name is Catherine, and I am the leader of our customer success of North America. So I will be here going through our live demo of the platform, talking a little bit about Core, what we are, how we can help you and your agency to better manage your, your business, to better negotiate with your clients, to have all the information that you need in a single solution. So again, just a reminder for all of those just joining in, any questions that you guys have, please feel free to write them in the chat or in the Q&A section that we have here in the Zoom link. Um, and we will have some time dedicated at the very end of the presentation for those questions. So let's get started. Just to give you a brief overview of everything that we're going to be going through on today's call, uh, I'll give you guys a brief overview of what is core, why are we here, again, what we offer, and then we'll get into the platform. We'll see real live what's going on, how we can manage everything from tasks, projects, resources, clients, profitability, uh, everything. So we'll go through that. And then again, just a reminder, the Q&A session at the very end. So what is CORE? CORE is an all-in-one management solution that is specifically aimed for creative agencies, and it helps automate timesheets through artificial intelligence. And we're helping to predict profitability, reduce work overload, and improve client engagement. That's kind of a surrounding theme that we have at CORE, but the idea is really to help you comprehensively manage your agency's operations. There are so many tools out there that can help with project management and financial management and time tracking and all of that, but the goal here with CORE is to be a single source of truth, to be a single tool that can manage end-to-end -end everything that you do within your processes as an agency. So we manage, again, time management. We're looking at time tracking our team, our tasks, our projects, resourcing. A big part of how agencies work is our team members and understanding where their time is being spent, if they're being overloaded, if they're being underutilized. How can we understand in real time what the workload is of our team members? Going into project management, full-time collaboration from end to end, being able to collaborate not only internally, but also with our clients as well. We have a great way to allow clients to also access the platform so you can work smarter and easier with those clients, providing transparency with them. And then of course, all of this wraps up into understanding profitability, understanding how our projects are performing, how our clients are performing, what projects or services are worth continuing, which ones maybe are taking up too much time and not giving us the right output or that profitability that we're looking for. How can we renegotiate and understand uh, everything that's going on with our clients? So all of this in a single solution. We hear a lot that people come in, I have one solution for time tracking, one solution for project management, one for resourcing, one for profitability. Now, here within CORE, you're going to be able to do all of that in a single place. All right, so with that brief overview, now it's time for us to hop into CORE to see live everything that you guys can do with the system. So I will jump in here and let's hop into CORE. So as I mentioned, it is a vertical solution that is made for agencies. Now it is a robust tool. There's a lot that is in here, but it is also very user-friendly. The idea is to be able to simplify the inputs to maximize the outputs, to be able to have an easy way for our team to track their time, to manage tasks and projects, and to also understand on the outside as a project manager, as a director, as a C-level, what is going on with my team? How is my team performing? Where can we optimize project performance? Can we make adjustments uh, when people are unavailable to take on work or they're being underutilized? So that's a huge thing for us to see. So when we first come into CORE, we see our side panel that has all of the different modules. Now, something to note here is that CORE is a very customizable tool in terms of what we're seeing. There's a lot, right? So of course, there are some members of our team who need to view the high level metrics and all of the resources and all projects and clients. 
And there are some that we just want them to be able to have a simple place to track time, to manage projects and tasks. So when we are looking at our user base, we're able to customize roles and permissions to allow people to access the system. So just like any project management system, we have user licenses that everyone comes in. And with those, they are divided into four primary roles. Those roles are C-level, director, project manager, and collaborator. Now, of course, these are access roles. It doesn't necessarily have to be your role within the agency, but this is to help simplify how you access and visualize information in the platform. And as we can see, we have permissions that can be customized across people. We can have people of the same role with different permissions and visibility to maximize the opportunities that they have in the platform while also simplifying how many times they have to click to find what they need. So we're looking at our user roles and permissions, again, everything from C-level down to collaborator. Now, as I've mentioned, Core is also a profitability solution. So in order to understand profitability, we need to understand our team, our resources, and their availability, right? So we have to understand and be able to configure this information and know that my team has a specific amount of working capacity per month and per week. So we can understand if they're going to be able to take on work, if they're going to be able to have that project down the road. So when we establish that at each user's level, we can say that each person would have a typical eight hour workday. Maybe in this case, in my demo site, I have 10 available working hours in my day. So when I'm checking my calendar and I'm looking at my Gantt chart, I can see if I'm reaching that 10, if I am under or over that consistently to then make better decisions. We also have our hourly rates. Now, of course, we understand in the agency world, there's what we pay our team and what our client pays for our team's time. So we do look and understand cost rates and bill rates. So we're able to see true profitability, true profit margins on both of those different rates. The first one that we see here is going to be cost because we do want to see what our based costs are on all of our projects against time. But of course, we also have those rate cards that we can build in based on positions. We can come in and we can organize that each person has their specific rate based on what we are going to be setting up against our clients. So that is the base setup of our users. We can also build teams to automate and simplify project assignment, task assignment, getting everything done and organizing how we are divided within our agency. This is also going to help us get really good outputs, great reports on understanding the workload, how our teams are performing, are certain teams more overwhelmed than others, and what we can do there as well. So we've built the foundation, we have our users, our team, we have the right kind of information and data, and that's going to help us build everything that is to come throughout the system. So again, we've built that base, and now, the next part of this is our clients. Without our clients, we have nothing. We need to make sure that we have our list of clients, the clients that we're working with, potential clients that are coming up, working on pitches, anything that we need to be tracking. So we have an easy place for us to come and understand our clients. Now we do handle internal and external clients. So it's a great way for us to manage billable and non-billable time for us to really see where we can maximize that potential. And of course, with a system like Core, we're able to minimize that administrative, tedious manual entry, and we're able to maximize those billable hours with our clients and hopefully see those numbers increase in terms of profitability. So when I am looking at a particular client, we can come in and understand how this client is paying. Because again, agency world, we have different ways of uh, billing our clients for our services, meaning that we have one-shot payments, we have retainers, we have fixed fees, we have time and material, it's endless. So of course, being able to structure those and build those out as needed to assign them to the projects is going to help us really understand a great breakdown of all different types of client relationships. So our fees can come in here where we can organize. I have a set monthly income and that is going to be assigned for 
X amount of projects, whether that's one project or a hundred projects, we can have that breakdown and really visualize that information. We can also see brands and products, and we also have metrics in here. So we're going to see in real time how each of our clients is performing throughout their lifetime with us, the good, the bad, and all of our information here on a client basis. So we have the clients. Now we need to know what our services are. What is it that we offer? What do we want to provide our client? And what is this, what are the steps that we need to get those services delivered? Project templates is probably the easiest way to help simplify project creation and get the team up and running. So when we are looking at our project templates, the first thing that we need to think about is what do I offer? What is, what is my service? And again, what are the steps I need to take both internally and client facing to deliver that? We could have a range of phases, parent tasks, subtasks, dependencies, concatenations. There's so many things that we can do when we are building out our templates so that when I am going in and my client has paid for that service, I know right off the bat that when my project managers are creating those projects, they don't have to come and ask, what is the service? What do we have to do? How am I going to build this out? Because the offering is here. It's easy. It's already built out. I can see all the steps that need to be done. We can make them as simple uh, or as long as we need to, to understand what needs to be happening in those projects. So then we go in and we have a new project that comes in for a client. So I have a campaign that I am running for a specific client. And when I come in here, it's very easy. I only have three required pieces of information that need to be set when creating a project. They are the project name, the client for whom this project is for, and whether it is a templatized or a blank project. Hopefully, if we can get all of your services templatized, we don't have to do too many of those ad hoc, step-by-step -step building projects. We can come in and have everything already pre-built here within our templates. Then, of course, we go into the details. We get into the nitty-gritty, the granular information of our projects, including all of the details Recurrency, is this a service that we offer on a recurring basis? If that's the case, I don't want to have to come in every single month and create a project or create new tasks. I'm gonna let the system do that for me. I'm going to be able to set, is this something that I do every month, every quarter, every year? And the system will be able to help me understand and set that up. So I know at the beginning of every month, that the system's automatically populating everything that I need. The next thing is team. And of course, one of the foundations of this particular call is understanding and having visibility over your resources, over your team, uh, over everything that's going on in your projects. So here, when we are looking to assign members to our team, we're going to see that we have all of our users with their avatars, and those avatars will actually have colors to them. They're going to be color-coded based on the availability that our team member has to take on work. So I go in and I create a project and I see that somebody is overwhelmed, they are in the red, they have no more capacity to take on work. So I know that they're probably not my best resource for that particular project. So I can come in and find the resources that are correct for this project. I can even do this by team and we can have all of our different teams assigned to the project as well, simplifying all of the notifications. People will get notified in real time, everything that they have been assigned to. Hey, you've got a project coming up. They'll be able to come in very easily to core and access that project. And then of course, the final step is profitability. How is this client paying? And because we've already set up that information at the client level, perhaps they pay with a retainer fee, or this might be a one-time campaign that we're running for the client. So we can select whether this is something that we're only doing one time, or if this is going to be coming from that specific retainer or fee that that client has. 
Another great thing is being able to understand a breakdown of time invested in these tasks and projects. I want to see from my client, how much time am I investing in account management? How much time am I investing in design? It doesn't need to be task specific. I need an overview. How am I performing at each of these levels? So we can set up categories to be able to understand that time breakdown over our projects, between our clients, and within our fees. So it's a really great feature to be able to manage that. So once we have set all of that up, again, just took me a few minutes to be able to come in and create my project. Right off the bat, I can see my tasks are already created based on my project start date. We have our deadlines pre-populated. We have our collaborators already established. They know that they're going to have work. And we can see all of the details here. Another thing that we can see is our Gantt chart. Our Gantt chart is going to help really understand the full start to finish scope of this particular project and will also help us understand the flow as we're going through how this project is performing, where we need to make adjustments. Something is delayed, perfect. I can come in and I can move our deadlines with a quick drag and drop and move all of the project together. I don't have to go in one by one and make any adjustments easily done through a drag and drop, change all the things that we need to. One task is going to be longer or shorter than expected. All of that is done right in the moment. So the setup is simple. The adjustments are simple because of course those templates give us the foundation. Then of course the clients will give us the true details when they need it delivered, all the information that they need. So the setup is already done. Then of course we have our profitability tab because we have already set up with our user base, what is their hourly rate? What is their capacity to take on work? We're automatically given an estimated profitability. I can see right off the bat, I've just created this project and it looks like I'm going to have about 7% profitability on this. It's saying that based on the amount of hours that I have assigned to my team members, my expected hourly cost is uh, about 3,200, where my budget is 35. So that leaves me with about $234 at the end. Now that's projected because that's what we expect. That's what we're planning for. And planning and estimating is a key component within the platform to be able to better understand deviations, how projects are performing in real time. So that top layer here is going to show us what I'm planning for, what I'm hoping will happen. And then of course, the bottom row is going to show the reality, which could be that we do things much faster, we have to track less time than expected, all of that. It also could mean that we spend more time than we've expected. And having insights in real time as we are tracking is going to be crucial to make those updates with our clients, to negotiate future contracts, to even reassign our, pro our projects and our templates to understand, okay, we've consistently been selling this for 3,500, but we're seeing that our margins are getting smaller and smaller. It's taking us longer because the client's needs are changing. So maybe we need to change our times, adjust our projects, and we can go in and do that in our template. So we have all of that set up. And now I will jump into a project that's already in motion to show you what it looks like when we're actually in the day-to-day -day of our projects. So as we can see here, we have a project with different phases, parent tasks, subtasks. We can see lots of colors. We can see all the information of people who are involved in this. And it's going to give us a lot of information at a high level. I can see right off the bat the status of my different tasks. I can see that we have new tasks, ones that have been completed, ones that are in progress. So this will help me align if we're in line with what we're expecting with our project. Going back into those categories, these categories are a great way for me to see I have spent a specific amount of time for account management, for design, for creative, and it's giving me really great insights into if I'm within those limits that I have established with my client. And then of course, the profitability in real time. So of course, in this particular project, we can see that this project is not planning to be profitable. And right now it is, but the end result is going to be negative. 
So we can make adjustments. We can adjust our budget. We can adjust our times, our uh, resources. Maybe I need somebody more junior to get things done or somebody more senior to get it done quicker, whatever that might be. You're able to move things around, make those adjustments and see this in real time have its effect. Again, deviations is another big one. What did I plan and what is the reality? I can see on a task basis, I plan for six, but it took me eight and a half. I plan for 25 and it took me 26. Now these numbers are pretty normal. An hour here, a couple of minutes there is fine. But what happens when we start seeing those services that we're planning for a specific amount of time and we are going way over? That's where we have to make those decisions. And if we're consistently seeing that with specific clients or even with specific team members, those are decisions that we can make to better manage our projects. So we have the project built out, we're starting to work on it. Now I need to know as a project manager, how is my team looking? How is everything going with them? Are people overwhelmed? Are they within their available time? And as we've seen, the avatars within the solution are, are going to give us that in the projects. But I need an easy way to be able to see those resources. So that takes us into our Gantt chart. And the Gantt chart is a fantastic way for me to see what the team is up to at any given moment. I can see all of my different team members and those avatars again that are showing those colors. Core is a very visual solution. It is a colorful way for us to, to manage things makes things a little bit more fun. So I can see here right off the bat that it looks like I have several team members here who are quite within their capacity, but I have other team members in the red. So I want to see maybe on a daily basis, how many hours does that person have available over the next 15 days, 30 days uh, to be able to take on different work. So we can start moving through. We can see this on a monthly basis, for example, and be able to start planning better for our upcoming projects, any kind of changes that we're going to need to make. And what's great about this, it's dynamic. If I need to reassign something, I can simply drag and drop it to somebody else. I can move deadlines as I need to. It's an easy way for me to make those changes as we're going on. Because of course, real-time changes happen. It's hard to always plan for everything. It's hard to always know that everything is going to run exactly as we had expected it to. No, things change. It's part of the agency world. So our goal is to be able to give you a tool that will allow you to see those changes in real time and proactively make those types of decisions of changing the resource, moving things around, um, whatever that might be, to also maintain a healthy work balance. We see a lot in the agency industry, burnout, turnover. And if we can avoid that by understanding ahead of time how our team uh, is in terms of their working capacity, that's going to be a lot better. We're going to be able to reduce that burnout, reduce that turnover, work better with our team members. So in the day-to-day, -day, I want to think about what is the most painful part of having to work in a project management solution, really in the agency world, time. Nobody likes to track time. Nobody wants to do it. They just want to do the work, get paid, and enjoy everything else in life. So, of course, understanding that and being a tool that is primarily based for agencies, we want to give users as many different ways to track time in a simple and user-friendly way so that we can have that easy output, understand those timesheets, everything that is going on. So my homepage is my task list. I come into core and I have to see everything that I have assigned. Now we have the overall task list, but I want to focus on the my task list. The my task list is going to help me organize myself and know what are the things that I most need to focus on today, this week, upcoming, and even things that I've already finished that may still be in my list that I have yet to archive. I'm waiting for final confirmation from my PM, from the client, whatever that might be. So I come in here and I have all of the tools that I need to to start my day. 
I have my items that I have to do today, which I can see already that the first thing on my list is an urgent priority. So I need to get into it. I'm going to go into my task and I'm going to be able to work and see everything that I need to do. I can also move it. Okay, this is urgent, but I need to do it second because I have a meeting in an hour with this client and I need to get that brief done. So the great thing is I can come in and rearrange, organize my day and focus on what I need to be doing. So as I come in and I look at my task, okay, what do I need to be doing? I can have all of the information located here in my task. And this brings me into collaboration. I can work with my team to know that we are communicating through our message board where we can uh, have all of our consolidation of communication at the task level here. I can share files. We integrate with Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox. We have tons of different ways of sharing information in an easy way. The goal of this is to avoid having something in Teams, something in mail, something in Slack, something on a phone call or a sticky note, because that gets really hard to be able to manage the day that somebody is out sick or leaves or is not able to take on a project and we need to reassign. Having a single place to come in here to be able to work together is big. So having those files right at my fingertips as I'm going through and working, it's going to simplify my life as well as being able to communicate with my team members about any changes or anything that is coming up. I can also do that here within my message board. We can see a history of everything that's going on. And then we can also see our time tracking, all of the information about time that has been invested in this task, who's tracked their time, when it was and how long. We have a great registry of all of this information. So as we're talking about time tracking, I can see, many different ways to do this. In my task panel, I have the top right-hand corner. I could start a timer. I could get into a meeting that I'm not sure if it's going to run short, run long, but I am dedicated on that meeting. So I'm going to start my timer and we're going to work. So I don't have to think about it. All I have to do is finish my meeting, leave whatever I have to do and stop that timer. I go ahead and I accept the time and it goes right into my timesheet. We also have manual entry where we can come in and manually track the time that we are spending from our task panel. I can go in and say, oh, I had forgotten to track last week. So I'll go back in and track for last Thursday. I was working on this for about two hours last Thursday. Super easy to be able to do it that way. The next is straight from the list. I don't have to open anything. I can come in directly and have access to that same timer and that same manual entry that I did within the task panel, but just within my task list. So it's a nice, easy way for me, able, me to be able to do that. Now, you'll also notice at the very top, there is this lovely little progress bar next to our time tracking button. This progress bar is going to show us different time entries that we have had throughout the day. And again, this brings us back to those users, their availability. So in my profile, I have 10 hours available to work every day. So this progress bar, once it gets to that 10, it will turn green. It will say, yep, you've tracked all your hours for the day. Congrats, good for you. So I can see all of the things that I have been working on and all the time that I have tracked. But you'll also notice that there is this column here that is suggested. Now, as we mentioned at the very beginning of our call, Core uses artificial intelligence. And with that, we can add in time suggestions to help make time entry that much easier. Core is able to understand the interactions that my team is having with the platform, with their tasks, uh, with their previous tracking history. All of that gets understood from the platform and it builds out suggestions. It says, it looks like you were assigned to this particular task today. And based on your movements in and out of that task, based on messages you sent, files you shared, um, or even previous tracking history, every time I have a measure and archive type task, it takes me about an hour and 15 minutes. So Core would see that and it would say, hey, I suggest that it took you an hour and 15 minutes or hour 17 minutes to do this task. And I can go, oh yeah, that's exactly what it did take me. So I simply have to click on that and it gets added to that track. Time goes into my timesheet very easily. So when we are looking at that timesheet, 
we'll see again those suggestions. So I can go back and I can look at any time that I might have had a suggestion on the time that I was spending on any of my tasks. I can see that I have reached all the different hours that I needed to for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And if there are any suggestions, I simply come in here and I select those and it makes it a lot easier. Because again, nobody wants to track time. We want to simplify to be able to give everybody an easy way to manage that, to have the outputs as well that we're going to need. This comes into timesheets where we can also keep track of where the team is tracking their time and if they're tracking all the time we need, because that's going to be about a foundation of our outputs. If we don't have good inputs, we won't have good outputs. So we need to have our team tracking time. We need our projects to be built correctly with all of the information, our team members, our profitability, our project templates, all of that. So this is that foundation to give us the outputs. So when I see that I have team members either not tracking their time at all, tracking below the amount of time that they should per day, those are indicators to me. The same is if they are consistently tracking. I know that's great for me to know that my data and my outputs are going to be accurate. And even if they're exceeding that, if I'm starting to see a lot of time going above and beyond what they should have in their profile, maybe that's an indicator that that person is overworked. They have a lot on their workload that maybe we can remove, we can delegate, we can reassign, whatever that might be using our Gantt chart so that we see more green than anything. And as part of that foundation, this will also help me understand those outputs. And that brings me here into metrics. So metrics, as we can see, will give us all the information that we need in terms of profitability. And this comes along with that time entry. If not all of my team is tracking their time, that's going to affect the reliability of the outputs of the data that I have. So we want to make sure that they're doing that. So when I am looking here and I'm seeing this graph of my profitability month over month, uh, I can see, okay, this has this looks pretty accurate. It's about 90, 89% reliable because my team does a pretty good job with setting up projects. My profiles are set, but time tracking could be a little bit better. And then jumping into insights. Now, insights is our BI solution that gives all of the information that we're going to need in real time that many of you today have to manually export from one system or another and try and build and manually manipulate to get the information that you need. We understand that agencies work differently and need different information and different outputs. So we've put together a ton of different types of reports. So everything from a company level where I am seeing my profitability, my costs, my deviations, whether that's I do things a lot faster or slower than expected, I'm over my estimated costs, I'm under my estimated costs, those deviations will help me to understand how we're moving all the way into specific clients. Which of my clients are more profitable than others? Is it worth maintaining a client? Is that client bringing down our profit margins? Is a client that we have really adding in a lot of revenue really profitable in their projects that we can try and sell more to, that we can continue a great relationship with, that I have this information here within Insights. So I can see how much time am I investing per client? Does it make sense? Is that client profitable? If that client's not profitable, why am I spending so much time on them when I could be focusing my time on other clients that could potentially bring in more money or be more profitable? So we have tons of reports like that that will allow you to make better decisions based on real-time data. And all of this is happening in a single solution. All of this is in one place and updated in real time. If I make an adjustment in a task or a project, it gets updated in, in the reports. If I reassign resources, the hourly rates of those people might differ and therefore it will update in my reports, it will update in my planning to be able to work a little bit better. The same thing at a project level. Do I have a lot of delayed projects or tasks? How are my deliverables? What is my overview on all of my projects? And one of my favorite ones are reworks. We live in an agency world where we do plan for changes, 
we do plan for back and forth with a client to make sure that we are delivering the highest quality uh, service that we can. But there are times when that client comes back one too many times with one too many changes that were not within scope. And I'm sure you are all thinking about one particular client or even multiple clients that really just come back and they just add on work. So having a place within core to be able to even mark those and to be able to manage how much time we are working on those reworks. Is this something that the client is asking for? Is this an internal rework that we are just doing internally that we're going to accept the cost and the time to make sure that we're delivering something that is of high quality? Is this happening to a specific type of project or service? All of these things that we can start analyzing to understand and better negotiate those future contracts or understand that we need to sit down with that client and say, hey, we're going to be delayed because this project has officially added on 10, 15, 20 hours, weeks, days, months to what we had expected. And that's because these changes come up. So we have an easy way to come in, reports that are going to allow us to see that information in real time as we are working. And then the final foundation is our people. We want to take care of our people. We want to take care of our team and know that they have the best balance, that they're working hard, but they are also, you know, within the range of their workload that they should be. So I can come in and see how many people are tracking, where they're tracking, what's their capacity to take on specific work, looking at by team, are there certain teams that are oversaturated? Are there teams that are underutilized? So we can look at teams. Again, the possibilities are endless and I can do an entire call just based on reporting, but there's a lot of information that we can get here out of the simple inputs that we have from creating our user base to building our relationships with our clients, our service offering for those projects, all built into our tasks to give us all the information that we need here on our outputs. So with that, I will close out the demo side of it and we can go back and just quickly talk through a little bit more about outside of just being a solution and a, a software, we also have the service aspect. Because we understand how agencies work, we know that it's helpful to have somebody accompanying you and information to support you in this type of a change. Moving solutions like project management solutions, financial tracking, task management, project management, that kind of a change requires change management. It's very difficult to just do by yourself when it requires a lot of different changes within the organization. And we're there to accompany you with that. As part of the customer success team, we are here to support agencies from all over the world of all shapes and sizes because we've worked with agencies of all shapes and sizes all over the world. So we have our support team. We handle these webinars and live demos. We have Core Academy, which is a fantastic resource to learn more about the tool. We also have articles and blog posts. Our investors and our board is, are filled with some amazing, well-known names in the industry who are always there to give us insights and to provide additional insights to you on the industry and everything that is going on in the agency world. So on top of just the platform, you are also getting everything else that is involved with our services. So uh, that is just something that I wanted to mention as well. So now I would love to jump in to our Q&A session while we have some time. I see that there are a few different questions here in the chat, but I do uh, encourage you to continue adding those. You can either add them to the chat box or you can add them here to our Q&A session. So. Let's see here from Nick. Nick's got a couple of great questions. So does CORE connect to ADP or other HR systems to port PTO and other personal information automatically? Yes, so CORE does have an open API where we can handle integrations from all different systems. Uh, it's really important for us to understand just the kind of information that you would like to send from one system to the other, whether that is payroll and information about our users, financial systems, really anything. We also do connect with Zapier. So it's a great way to be able to do that automatically with 
endless amounts of solutions outside. So that is something we can absolutely do. The next question is, can you assign more general teams from the beginning instead of individuals? So as we saw when we were setting up the project, we can absolutely assign teams. It's a great way to go in and I just need this project to be my account managers, my creatives, my designers, my researchers, whatever that might be, you can go in and you can assign that to particular teams. Now, when we're looking at tasks, tasks can be managed by one or more individuals. So that could be something that we assign different team members to the task. We can either do that from the template or we can do that as we are in the project and in the tasks themselves. So definitely possible to do that. And then integrating with Slack, we do uh, through Zapier have an integration with Slack. So that is something that you can absolutely do. Again, as I had showed you within our task panel, we do have our message board and our file sharing. So if we're able to consolidate all of our communications and collaborations within core, that is always going to be the recommendation that we have from our team. But of course, we understand there are some of those external chats um, and external groups that need to be maintained. So of course, we can find a way to do that integration. And then I see somebody asking about costs. I recommend that you speak with your core consultant. They're going to be able to give you all of that. We have many different uh, payment plans, all of that. It is by user. So of course, talk to them. They're going to be the ones to give you the information depending on um, contract length, all of that. So talk to them. And then can time tracking be provided in a re report for preparing payroll? Absolutely. So as we saw our timesheet, that's one simple way to visualize time, but we also have a separate report that is based on hours where you can do it by label, by category, by team, by person, by time, so many different ways to report on hours. We do offer some customization as well in reporting. So if there are any specific types of reports that you would need for payroll, that is something that we can absolutely look into as well. Bill asks, is there some sort of numbering convention that can be applied to projects? Our current solution numbers projects, which is important to our workflow. Yes. So Core automatically provides an ID to everything in the solution because we understand that things need to be exported and imported. And in order to be able to do that, everything gets assigned a specific ID. We also have uh, IDs that can be manually added in. So depending on your workflow, you can always add in specific work IDs, um, any numbers, contract numbers, tracking numbers that you need to for your specific tasks, projects, fees, really anything in the system. Laura asks, can we bill clients from this platform? We do have our estimates module, which is a way to build those invoices, get those out. And of course, we are able to integrate with different systems that are able to handle that billing. We are finalizing our integration with QuickBooks. So if you do work with QuickBooks, that's another one that we will be able to work directly and, and bill and in, invoice clients uh, using that type of integration. And then how long is the setup conversion in general? It's really hard to say not knowing the agency size because we handle everybody as custom as we can in terms of times. We have a setup that we believe in with our change management and implementation processes that with for smaller clients could take a couple of weeks with our bigger enterprise clients might take about a month to get everything set up. It depends as well on the agency itself, what your processes are, what your current setup is and how that transition will work. But from the customer success team, we will sit down and work with you every step of the way from the kickoff call to go live, to walk through every step-by-step -step process that needs to be done to ensure that that setup is done correctly, right? As I was mentioning, we don't just want to give you the tool and say good luck and not support you in this change. We want to be there to be able to help you. So that's a big part of that. Another person asking, is there a way to import data from another similar service? Yes. So again, with uh, integrations, we have our open API. So for us, it's really important to understand the information that you need to have from one system to the other and what information we're going to need to have that. So yes, integrations can absolutely be possible both on the front end into core and on the back end outside of core. 
And I'm assuming Core is not a GL accounting system as I didn't see of any of that functionality. Yes, it is not an accounting system. Uh, we don't do any of that, but we can, again, integrate with other systems as needed. Uh, we would just need to talk to you and understand what those needs are. And if you have another system that you're already working with, we can discuss integrating with them. And this last one here that I see is Laura asking, we track retainer time for a client per month and roll it forward with overage, underage going forward to next month. Yes, that is also possible within core. As I had mentioned, we do set up fees and retainers. So it's an easy way for us to manage month by month how that income is being distributed. So you can come in and organize if there is a use or lose, if there's overage or underage, you're going to be able to track that very easily as you're going through with fees. And then of course, in that profitability tab, we're able to see how things are performing. We can adjust budgets, additional costs in real time as those projects change. So I can see one final question that was moved over into the chat box. Um, so of course, if there are any last minute questions, please feel free to add them in. But Patty asks, if we migrate from another agency management system, can the accounting history from the current setup be migrated? Absolutely. We can get all of that information. We uh, have a way to be able to get data from one system to another. We can either do that through the API or we can do it through certain imports that we have to get everything from costs, timings, um, the, the task list, the project list, all the IDs, your clients, everything. So we have handled many, many different migrations from one solution to the other. Uh, so all the different data that you might need, will be able to transfer it. So let's see, I just want to make sure there's so many questions and I love this, making sure that I am getting to all of them. This has been fantastic. We really appreciate all of your questions. I hope that this has been a useful session for you. And as I mentioned, please re reach out to your core consultant. They're going to be able to give you all the information you might need on your particular use case, your agency size and background, everything that you guys are doing within your processes to see what's going to be the best way to transition you guys to working with core. So with that being said, I would like to thank you all again for joining us. Um, if you would like to learn more, feel free to go onto our website, projectcore.com. Um, they're in the chat box. Agustina from our team has just added in uh, a couple of really helpful links that can give you information about different case studies, things that you might learn from us. And of course, I hope to see you all very soon on the customer success side. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for joining. Bye.